first judge will decide whether or not the state attorney's office fourth judicial circuit will stay on the trial in the death of Jared Bridegan. That was the basis of a court hearing in the case this morning. Jared Bridegan was killed in February of 2022 in Jacksonville Beach in what investigators have called a murder for hire case. Now his ex-wife Shana Gardner and her second husband Mario Fernandez are both facing first degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder charges. Both are pleading not guilty. The defense teams have filed a motion to remove the state attorney's office from the case. Now I've been following this case closely since it began back in February of 2022 was in the courtroom this morning to learn what the next steps will be. The issue stems from allegations the defense team made that the state attorney's office fourth judicial circuit improperly handled attorney client privileged communications when they downloaded the phones, Google drives and iClouds of Shanna Gardner and Mario Fernandez. To sort out that issue, Judge London Kite brought in an independent magistrate, Judge Robert Foster, to view the unredacted communications and decide what was privileged and what was not. The state argued today that Judge Robert Foster should be the one to decide if they can remain on the case, saying that since he has seen the unredacted communications, he would best be suited to decide if there was prejudice rather than Judge Kite, arguing that knowing the content of the messages matter. But then if the court is not going to know what that content is, it puts the court at a disadvantage in determining what prejudice exists, if any. And that's why we thought the motion. Jesse Dreiser, representing Fernandez, and Patrick Carodi, representing Gardner, both want Judge Kite to make the decision. Dreiser arguing that was the plan all along. I would like to add that this is just yet another example of the state of Florida not following the procedures that are set forth either by agreement or court order in this case. This whole entire issue stems from an agreement that the state and I made at a pretrial hearing before my client was even arrested to make sure that our attorney-client privilege information would not be looked at. Patrick Carodi, the defense for Shanna Gardner, says the crux of his motion to dismiss the indictment against her is what he alleges was substantial misconduct. And that would be the actions by the prosecution team, and we believe that includes the state attorney's office, it includes the ATF, it includes the Jacksonville Beach Police Department, that they, you know, that there was this agreement and then they all willfully and intentionally sort of disregard it and start going through materials that they knew uh, were carbon copies of the phones that they were told they were not allowed to touch. Judge Kite seemed frustrated at times and said she will take the issue under advisement and issue her order in writing. Katie Jeffries, First Coast News, on your side.